Hi there, I'm Jono from Thermaltake Australia and this is how to install our TH series of all-in-one CPU coolers. Today, we'll be using our gorgeous new TH240 in white. The same general instructions apply for all the TH all-in-ones, regardless of their size. First, unpack all your all-in-one and lay out all the parts. Amongst these will be your fan screws, your CPU block screws and mounting plates. Remember, depending on whether you are using an Intel or an AMD socket, you will need to mount the back plate accordingly. This other bracket goes around the water block and which one you will use will also depend on which socket you have. While there isn't really a set way to start your install, we're going to start with mounting the fans to the radiator first. It's a great idea to think about where your all-in-one will be mounted in your case and whether you want your fans to pull or push air through the radiator. It's also a good idea to think about your cable management. Flipping the fans around until the cable will face the best way for optimal routing to the back of your case. Once you have decided all of this, pop your fans atop the radiator and screw them in place using the long screws. Today, as we're using AMD, we'll be switching out the current Intel bracket on the water block for this one. We will also be needing this contact pad, the aforementioned CPU block screws and some thermal paste. First step is to just slowly slide out the current Intel bracket and then just slide on in the AMD one. It'll only go in one way and we'll just sit snugly around the block. For the back plate, you're going to want to place the side that says the socket you have on the side facing in. So, for us with AMD, we'll be placing the AMD side facing into the motherboard. The AMD screws will be inserted into the innermost holes of the brackets as per the instructions. When you are threading through the screws, just ensure that they lie flush. They'll only do this by moving around until it aligns properly. And this is how you know the screws are in correctly. You now want to place all the washers on. This provides some resistance and ensures everything stays put. To install the contact pad, simply pull off the sticky parts and line it up with the bracket. This doesn't necessarily need to be perfect, but it is there just to help and ensure there's no metal on metal contact. Now you might notice that we don't have the original AMD backplate and mounts installed on this motherboard. That's because I took these off earlier. But if you haven't removed yours already, do so now as we don't need that mount for this all-in-one. Now mount the new backplate through the four holes surrounding your CPU. While holding it in place, grab the supplied plastic black spacers and slide them over the screws. You'll know that they're on correctly if they're tight and provide a little bit of resistance around the screw and hold it in place. Your next step is the thermal paste. Your first step is always to remove the plastic guard covering the water block, as surprisingly many people forget about this step. Now, get your thermal paste and apply it to your CPU. For a more in-depth video that talks a bit more about thermal paste application, check out one of our previous videos on it here. Now simply bring the block down over the CPU, aligning it with the back plate we inserted earlier. Next, take the little silver screws and screw those over the top, securing the CPU water block in. Just do these up finger tight for now. Now go in with the Phillips head screwdriver and in a diamond pattern, fully secure all four screws in place. Now that the water block is firmly secured, it's time to plug in the two cables coming out of it. The longer of the two cables here is an ARGB header cable, which will connect to an ARGB header on your motherboard to control the lighting. The shorter of the two is the fan pump header, and this is what gives your pump power. You can technically put this in any system fan port on your motherboard. Since we do have a CPU fan header free here, this is where we'll plug ours in. If you're unsure, double check with your manual. For the ARGB header cable, simply route it out the back of your case and we can deal with it again a little bit later. 
Next, we're going to move on to installing the radiator. First, free your fan cables from their cable ties and begin by slotting them through your case out to the back. Then, with your radiator, simply follow along the path of the cables to insert it in place with all of the cables now hanging out of the back. Take the smaller screws and line up the radiator with the mounting holes above, and begin screwing in the radiator. I'm doing this in a diagonal pattern first, just to hold it in place. However, there is really no set way to do this. Time to move on to the cables we threaded through to the back of the case a little earlier. These three pin fan headers can easily be daisy chained with this splitter, which comes supplied with the all-in-one. Plug each fan header in and then plug the other side into a header on your motherboard. Since this is my PC from home, I already have some splitters ready to plug this into, but consult with your all-in-one guide or your motherboard manual to see where to plug it in on your own board. Now it's time to get some RGB going. These smaller headers also daisy chain up to one another like so. Now, what you connect this up to will depend on whether you want to run this via your motherboard software or our TC controller. So once again, consult with your manual to find out what is best for you. We will be going with our controller as we think it's super easy to use. This just plugs directly into a SATA power cable, which should be hidden somewhere down by your power supply. Plug it into one of the SATA connectors like so, and then simply connect the other side of the controller to the female connector of those three pin cables you just daisy chained up. It might now be worth your time doing a little bit of cable management to tidy up all the jumble of cables you've got now inside the back of your case. My pro strat is then to loop the controller around to the front of your case for easy access. And that's it, you're done. Your new TH240 all-in-one cooler is installed. Remember to subscribe to the channel for more content from us. Like the video if you enjoyed it and check out some of our other awesome videos up on your screen right now. We'll see you next time.